Okay, this is uh, lesson 13.1, part two. Uh, you may have noticed in part one of the video that, um, that that is the video that I taught last year. And um, for the most part, I'll be using um, those archived videos um, and connecting them into these assignments. Um, but for this one, I needed to upload a new um, part two video uh, to cover the last two examples from 13.1. Um, so I'll just take a minute to um, tell all of you that I'm praying for you. And I know it's a little different to do our class online, but um, I'm here to support you and we will get through this and make sure you learn everything you need to know um, to finish honors pre-algebra and have a really good start to algebra one next year. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and cover the last two examples from 13.1. Um, in the first couple of examples, they were, uh, the equations were already set up to solve. And um, this equation here, y equals mx plus b, is really important. And especially in this chapter, you're gonna see that format over and over and over again. Because until an equation is in this format, it cannot be graphed. So what you see in these three problems is you see equations that are not in that format. So what you have to do first is you have to reorder them. Now understand you're not canceling anything out, you're just moving it to the other side of the equation. And when you do that, you have to use opposite operations. So you're not solving for x specifically, okay? You're just trying to get y by itself. All right, so let's look at the first one. It says y minus 3x equals 1. Well, if I need y by itself, that means I have to somehow move negative 3x to the other side of the equation. Because it's negative, that means that I'm going to add it. And when I add it, well, negative 3x plus 3x cancels out and I'm going to add it to the other side. Now, this is really important that you understand this part. You cannot add one plus three x together because they're not like terms. So instead, what you're going to do is you're gonna leave them separate. There's nothing you can do to combine them. Y is all that's left on the left side equals, now this is the important part too. Notice up here in your formula, that the term that has the x variable has to come first after the equal sign. So you have a 1 and you have a positive 3x. So you're going to write the 3x first. And I know it might kind of seem weird at first, but the more problems you do, the easier it's going to become. So 3x plus 1. How did I know it was plus 1? Because 1 was positive up here. If it had been negative, I would have said minus one. So now I have y equals m, which that's the number in front of the x. That's our slope or our rate. And you'll, you'll learn more about that uh, in chapter 13, plus b. And b is our y-intercept. That shows us the value that the line crosses the y-axis. Um, okay, so... We come to this next problem. Well, this one's a little more involved um, because there is a number now connected to y, but that's okay. Before you worry about that, you need to move the x term to the other side of the equation. So I just wanna give you a second to think about how you could get 5x to cancel over to the right side of the equation. All right, so if you thought, since it's positive, I need to subtract it, um, that's exactly right. So you need to subtract it from the other side as well. Um, now let's bring down what's left. So I have 2y equals, now remember what I said about the order. Order is going to matter here. My slope and my x have to come first. So I'm going to bring down negative 5x. Remember, I cannot subtract these terms because they're not like terms. I have to leave them separate. So negative 5x, now do you think it would be plus 4 or minus 4? So if you're thinking plus 4, that's correct because 
there's no sign in front of the four, so we know it's positive. All right, but we're not done yet because there's still this number connected to y. So now in order to solve for y, again, these opposite operations are important. So how could I get y by itself? If you're thinking to divide by two, that's correct. Now you have to divide by two uh, by the entire equation. Okay, so that gets y by itself. Remember, that's our goal. We can't graph an equation until y is by itself. You always want to leave the slope. Remember, slope is rise over run. So you always want to leave it a fraction so it stays in rise over run. Negative 5 over 2x. And then if you can divide the y-intercept, 4 divided by 2, definitely do that. And you do plus 2. All right, and now it's ready to graph. Okay, so let's look at this last problem. All right, what do you think you need to do first? Just look at it. All right, if you're thinking I need to subtract 4x, you are correct. All right, and now I have negative 1 third y equals, which one do you bring down first? Negative 4x plus 3, because 3 is positive in the initial equation. Okay, so now I've got this fraction connected to y. And again, my whole goal is to get y by itself, so I have to somehow get that fraction to cancel out. All right, so this is about as hard as it's going to get, okay? But in order to get this to cancel, I have to multiply it by negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3. Okay, so that would get this to cancel, but that means I have to multiply this entire right side by negative 3. Okay, so remember what that means. That means negative 3 times the negative 4x and negative 3 times the positive 3. So negative 3 times negative 4x is positive 12x, and negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Okay, and it's in y equals mx plus b. You say, well, I thought the formula was plus b, and this is a negative. That's okay. It just means that this number, negative 9, would be my y-intercept. It, it can be negative. All right, so now I have all three of these equations in slope-intercept form. And uh, you may be asked just to rewrite an equation. Or you may be asked to, to actually graph one of these, but remember, you can't graph them until they are in slope-intercept form. So that's what that example was for. All right, one more example and we're done. Okay, so we've got this real-life application here. <laughs> and um, obviously, we're all familiar with hurricanes. And so this one... Um, is talking about a hurricane. It says the wind speed y in miles per hour. One thing you need to be able to see right off the bat is what does y stand for and what does x stand for in the equation. All right, so that's really important. If you can understand that, then you'll you'll know where to plug in your numbers. Okay, so the wind speed of this tropical storm they just gave us an equation, y equals 2x plus 66, where x is the number of hours after the storm enters the Gulf of Mexico. Now, one other thing I want to point out is this is usually the value that's affected by the rate. Okay, the rate is my slope, which is 2. Um, okay, so when does the storm become a hurricane? Well, over here in the graphic, it gives me some important information, all right? Because again, it's asking me when the storm is gonna become a hurricane. Well, it says a tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speeds are at least 74 miles per hour. So I have this value here, 74 miles per hour. Do you think that that matches up with the Y value or the X value? 
Okay, if you're thinking y, speed in miles per hour, you're correct. So where is y in the formula? It's out in front of the equal sign. So that's where I'm going to plug in this number. 74 equals 2x plus 66. Again, 74 was plugged in for y because that's the value they gave me for miles per hour. And y comes before the equal sign in the equation. So now I have an equation to solve. 2x plus 66 equals 74. So I'm going to subtract first 66 to the other side. And 8 equals 2x. All right, so you see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to solve for x. Now I divide both sides by 2. And x equals, remember what x stood for. What did x stand for? x is the number of hours. So x equals 4 hours. That's how long it took this storm to become a hurricane. All right. So those were uh, the last two examples. I believe that's the last one. Let's double check real quick. Yep. Okay, so those were the last two examples for 13.1, and we are done with 13.1.